This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by PortCityCoin.com Oh my gosh, I just noticed that it was Thanksgiving today, so I'd better rush this Thanksgiving-related video into production. Why is it starting with video of something that's not Thanksgiving? Well, because Thanksgiving is the day when many of you need to be in the same room with family members who are in the military. And of course, like me, maybe you love your family members who are in the military and you enjoy being around them, but there's always that elephant in the room. You're that liberty person who doesn't support the military. You don't support our hero? Well, I've thought up an appropriate response to that kind of conversation, and I think I'm better suited to uh, articulate it than some, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm something of an anti-peacenik, or at least an anti-pacifist. You know, again, it's not, the, it's not the killing I'm against, it's just the killings of folks who don't deserve it, or the funding mechanisms uh, for the killings. So, I think what I would say, if it were me in your shoes right now, sitting in the room, eating turkey dinner, when uh, the topic of the military comes up, and or your opposition to it, I think, I think what I would say is something along these lines. You know, it, it, it's, not a, it's not a fringe position to be against force-funded monopolies. You know, if I had asked five minutes ago, which people in this room are against force-funded monopolies, I bet two-thirds of you would have raised your hands, including the, you, the military guy. So, I can be in favor of the existence of a, an F-16 or a, an F-16 pilot or a drone or a tank, and I can want people to have jobs driving them and sh sometimes even shooting them, sometimes even shooting them at people. I can want all those things, and I sort of do. If all the military were turned into civilians tomorrow, I still want this tank driving uh, to be able to have a good job. And I think someone's going to buy that tank, and I bet someone's going to want to hire somebody to drive that tank. These thin stabilized projectiles are fired at a muzzle velocity of 4,600 feet per second. Because maybe we need tanks. The problem is the distortion that is created when a military is, well, like the American military. If something's wrong, something's too big. It's one monopoly military that covers a massive region of the earth. You can't, you can't go to a different military uh, to get your, uh, your help when you need it, generally, inside, inside the United States, if you need help from the military at all in that location. There need to be multiple militaries that you can pick from the same way there are multiple grocery stores you can pick from. If it works for grocery stores, it will work for military. Now, I can't point to an example of where it's done this way, really, because of the fact that it's not allowed. There's been no experimentation allowed with this concept. That's why we don't have a lot of examples to go on. Uh, again, the, the, uh, the most relevant example I can think of was Fekret Abdic in the Bihach pocket at, uh, uh, in, in Bosnia during the 1993 era. He was a, uh, some sort of a, a businessman in former Yugoslavia, and he was able to keep that area at peace all the way up through, I think, 1994, which was you know about three years longer than the rest of Bosnia was at peace, unless you count these, these areas sort of on the periphery, which were uh, mono-ethnic and they, they didn't have... Any, any warring ethnic factions. Anyway, the other problem with the way the military is set up is that everyone's sort of forced to pay for it, whether it commits massacres or not. Walmart would cease to exist as an organization if it exploded a bomb at a wedding, you know, killing nine civilians for every terrorist, uh, like the American drone, drone strikes do, according to the Americans' own numbers. They'd cease to exist because they can't make you pay for them. They have to convince you to through good products and persuasion. Since the military just gets your money, it's not, not really held accountable. Something like a military should probably still exist, but it should earn its money as an institution just the same way Warren Buffett has to earn his. 
by selling things, investing, making good business decisions. And when, you, when it goes out of business, it's no big deal because there are plenty of other people doing the same business. Now, the obvious objection to this is, well, they might start fighting each other uh, locally. Well, again, the thing is, since this kind of thing has never been allowed, even on an experimental basis, we don't know. Please don't complain that something has never been tried because you banned it, or at least the institution that you're working for banned it, or the institution that you're supporting banned it. In America, if someone did try to start a, you know, a private defense agency, uh, they would be labeled a militia and driven out of business before they'd even started. Again, there's no need to make this complicated. We're supposedly all against monopolies here, or most of us. We're supposedly against stealing and that's what force funding is. They're stealing the money from the people and sending it to the military, which creates distortions in what should be a sacred and, and appreciated institution. Even my position may be too militaristic, in a sense, because if you look at the actual world, there, there are places that don't have a military, or at least there's one, and that's Costa Rica. And it is proven, <clears throat> proven that you don't even need... You don't even need, uh, well, it, it provides evidence that you don't even need a Walmart military. You don't even need uh, the kind of military that I sort of envision, which is still mechanized and advanced and very, very capable and fairly... I sort of envision that, but Costa Rica doesn't even have that, and they do really, really well, considering where they are geographically, the nasty neighbors they have and the communists that they, you know, the Soviet influence that they had to, de you know, deal with right next door back in the day. If there is to be some sort of military, let it be voluntarily funded, and let it have competition like everybody else. Rare coins, pawns, gold and silver bullion. Check out Port City Coin in Portsmouth, New Hampshire for your precious metal needs. A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, happy to do a cash transaction. Why buy your medals from one of those slave state mints when you can support the free state economy? Visit PortCityCoin.com, or as I like to call it, PortCityCoin.com.